Hey everyone, this is a quick video about matching focal length and focal angle between Maya and ZBrush. So I exported two models from ZBrush uh, that ship with ZBrush. One is the skin for the demo soldier, and the other is the skin for the, the dog that comes with ZBrush. And when you import them, you can see that they're vastly different scales. They're created by different artists and ship with the application. Um, so basically, these are the scales that they come in at. What I wanted to do first was try to set up an apples to apples test with ZBrush. So what I did was, uh, here's our demo soldier. If I just go to the front view and hit F to frame them, make sure perspective is turned on, right? So we can see perspective distortion turns on. And I also want to make sure align to object is turned on. And basically what I'm going to do now is turn on my see-through in ZBrush and see if I can match him up to the Maya uh, version of him. So when I look at Maya, I'm going to go ahead and frame him up. Now I should note, if I go to View, Select Camera, what I've done is, if I go into the camera, my perspective camera, I'm going to go ahead and zero out all of the translations and rotations. Leave the scales at one and leave the visibility to whatever it's set to, minus set to off. But just translate zero, 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 rotate zero, 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 and now I'm going to hit F in the window. And that's going to frame to the bounding box of this object. Now you'll notice it translates the camera slightly, but those numbers are related to this object. And if we look, our focal length is uh, 35 millimeter, right? So if I go back to ZBrush and go here, I can use see-through and I'll use uh, control and right mouse to scale and alt and right mouse to move. And I can kind of move these guys one right on top of the other. And it takes a little effort to rotoscope them right on top of each other, but they go right on top of each other. Now the number that I'm using, and this is the important part, it doesn't come from me, it comes from comes from a conversion chart created by a gentleman by the name of Kyle Hefley. I'll put a link to his uh, post about this stuff at the bottom of the page. And basically one of the conversions that he breaks down is a, d is a 35 millimeter focal length to a uh, focal angle uh, that corresponds roughly in ZBrush. So 35 millimeter is going to give me a 63.4 focal angle. So if I look, we saw my camera's 35 millimeter in Maya and 63.4 is my angle of view here and that allows me to have a pretty good match between the two there's little things that you can probably find that aren't hundred percent perfect but this is really really close so this is a very vertical object right this this guy's tall and um, the dog is more of a horizontal object let's take a look at that for a second so let's go to the dog and I'm gonna do the same thing I'm just gonna frame them up here pop over to ZBrush, or sorry, pop over to Maya, and let me just turn on my dog layer, and I'm going to frame him up as well, and if I go back to view, select camera, we can see again, the translate Z has moved to correspond to this guy, but the camera, the important thing is, since the perspective camera can move in all these different dimensions, it's important to zero these values out and then frame the object so that you know that you're looking exactly dead on at the object so that there's no perspective distortion introduced from the camera being you know moves a little to the left or moves a little to the right so again if I pop over to ZBrush I can use control and right mouse to scale alt and right mouse to move so I'll kind of roughly move them into place and then kind of scale them into place a little bit. And we can see that we get really close really fast and finding the right scale exactly. It's a little tricky. But between scaling and kind of moving him, we can get very close to what we have in Maya. And we can see a little distortion there. So you can use this as a starting point and then adjust the angle of view up or down slightly
but using see-through is a great way to check the registration between the two applications since there's no way to get the cameras to talk to each other directly. Um, a lot of people complain about ZBrush not having a conventional 3D um, interface with multiple viewports and um, uh, real-world cameras. Uh, it's the price you pay for some of the technology that we have access to in ZBrush. Uh, so what do you do when you get this um, when you get this information when you get you know everything registered the way that you want well there's a couple of things you can do first you definitely want to annotate this number somewhere separately maybe a little email to yourself or something like that um, if you change it from the default and you're working on something specifically for a project if you go up to the file menu and do a save as it'll save the project and the camera information so the angle of view should retain uh, with the, the file size if you just save the tool then of course you'll have to come back to this number and re-roto something else you can do is uh, we can go up to movie timeline show we can see our timeline up here right and by default the camera ticks in the timeline so I can go ahead and like just say right here make a camera tick and now it remembers that this is where that little tick is so I can still move around, rotate, do whatever I want to do to the model. And when I want to get back to exactly that, to exactly that view, I can come right over here. Right, so now I'm right back exactly at that view. We can confirm that with see through. Looks like I shifted a little bit. Alright, yeah, so I can see the feet are a little off, uh, but again, I can play with that number if I want to. So it may vary a little bit for longer objects <coughs> that go away from the camera as opposed to vertical objects, but either way, this is a pretty good system for storing, you know, um, kind of uh, uh, manipulations. You can also use the regular image plane. Um, I don't use that that much, um, but you can store views using image plane. Um, that's another way you can do it. Uh, timeline seems to work okay for me. Uh, but see-through just to make sure your registration is working is a great great little trick. One last thing that you can do is um, you can actually use see-through with YouTube videos or any video service provider. So let's go here. And I'm just going to say dog anatomy. Alright, so whatever. I'm looking at the Facebook commercial combination at canine anatomy. If I decided I like this, I can full screen it. Let's pop over to ZBrush see through bring my dog in here line them up and see through is really great because now you're not only stuck using images as reference you can actually use video as reference and when you make catching a likeness of an actor or something like that this is actually a really great way to work because in video you see a lot of angles that you wouldn't necessarily see in kind of a glamour shot so uh, that's you know another good way to use see through so hopefully this video helps some Again, the gentleman who came up with the number, which is the meat and potatoes of the Different video, angles and degrees of approximation. So definitely check out his page in the link below this video.